Hey YouTubers, today I just got my eBay item in, a Lionel 275 watt ZW transformer. Lionel has made some decent transformers over the years, but nothing has been more iconic than the Type ZW Transformer. First manufactured in 1948 along with the VW Transformer, this 250 watt powerhouse has the ability to control four trains at once. In the 1950s, Lionel put out the 275 watt unit, and in 2013, they put out the uh, ZWL 620 watt unit. Um, this item here I got off of eBay. Like I said, eBay. Uh, it's a 275 watt ZW, and I'm going to uh, pretty much uh, restore this item back to almost brand new condition. We're going to take it apart, clean it up on the inside and outside, clean off the main transformer, and give it some new parts so that it looks and runs just like brand new. Before we begin, I bought a book. Read it, learned it, got educated. At first glance, the transformer is matted up. It has some small dirt spots in the corners, but indeed it is in good condition and doesn't have any cracks on it. It also has a little splatters of paint on it, which indicates it could have been in a garage or possibly in the basement. Next, I'm going to open the transformer by loosening and removing these four screws. Magnet not necessary. It's also a good way not to lose your screws. Upon opening the lid, we can see the main transformer itself with the primary and secondary windings. Light bulb indicators and whistle diode. The directional and whistle soldering board. The circuit breaker, which is located behind these wires. This electrical cord is every electrician's worst nightmare. The grips and the knobs do show excessive wear, which tells me that this transformer has been used a lot. The common or ground strip has completely broken away from one terminal. On the right side, the carbon wheels have significant wear on them. And on the left side, one wheel has significant wear on it, while on the outside throttle has absolutely no wheel whatsoever. And if we look down to the right side of the transformer, we can see half of the carbon roller sitting on the bottom of the transformer. And just to the back left, we can see one of the rings that held the terminal piece onto the common or ground bar. And there's a broken wire here on the whistle slash button here. We're going to solder this back into place. So while I still have the transformer open, I want to measure the transformer's coil resistance readings. This means I'm going to measure the resistance on the primary and secondary coils of the transformer just to see if there's any major opens or shorts which may affect the train's operations. So this is the reading I'm getting on the primary coil, which is the plug side, 3.5 ohms, and it seems pretty legit. And a reading of about 0 0.5, 0 0.4 ohms on the secondary side, which I'm expecting because this does put out a lower voltage on the secondary side. So it looks like that the coils on the primary and secondary side are giving me fairly good readings. So a digital multimeter reads the electrical resistance of devices, but there is another meter that reads the resistance of insulators in transformers and in motors. And that meter is a megometer, or as we call it, a mega. Now this is the SUPCO M500 megometer, and it sends out a thousand volts of DC inside of the coils of transformers and motors to see if there's any grounding issues with the uh, coils of those devices. Setting up the mega is different than setting up the digital multimeter. The mega, this mega comes with two magnetic alligator clips, so you just put them on metal and it'll hold in place. So if if we were to set up this mega to measure out the primary resistance of the transformer, or we just attach them to the plug, like so, then we push the red button. The red light would come on showing that the coils were bad, but this is not true in the case. 
we're sending the 1000 volts DC through the coils and this is measuring the resistance of the coil not the insulator resistance. So how we do that we're going to keep one of the alligator clips on the uh, plug. We're going to take one off. We could put it on the metal plates or we could put it on the mounting plate of the transformer. Either way it's still metal. We're going to push the red button. Instantly it goes to 200 mega ohms which shows it's good. Then it goes to 300 mega ohms. Oh, and now it just went to 400 mega ohms. So the insulation value on the primary coil is showing between 3 to 400 mega ohms, which is actually in the good range. So the primary coil is actually good. Now let's take the alligator clip and put it on the secondary side coil of the transformer. Push the red button. It starts off around 400 mega ohms and now we're showing 700 mega ohms of resistance. And this is actually very good showing on the megometer, showing that this transformer is actually very good. All right, for the heck of this, I'll do this too. We're gonna connect the black alligator clip to the common, to red to the plug. Those readings look pretty good. Take the red plug off, and we're gonna test all the throttle terminals. So I'm going to hold in the button. That looks good. 200 mega ohms. 300. 300. And 200 mega ohms. So this ain't that bad. Now let's try this here. We're going to connect the red clip. Oh, before we do that, let's turn this throttle up all the way. See what we get. Trust me, it's not bad. It's all because we have the throttle turned all the way up. Now let's try this. Let's take the red cl uh, clip, put it on the throttle, and let's just test all the commons. Remember how I showed that this one was broken inside the transformer? Let's watch this. I'm going to hold down the button. 150, 200, 200. 200. Uh oh, not working. So this is actually a pretty useful tool, especially if you're going to go to a uh, train show and uh, you want to test out the ZW transformer. This guy could have been broken and you would have paid a lot of money for this at the dealer. So we've seen the difference between what a multimeter and a mega can do. Now what can help attribute to the mega's readings is going to be temperature, humidity, and dust. So if you have temperature, if you have a warmer day, you might get a higher reading. Uh, humidity is a big factor. So in the basement, I was doing a, uh, a mega reading on the transformer, and on the secondary coils, I was getting about 100 to 150 mega ohms, which showed in the caution area. So I waited out a few days, wait till uh, the humidity level dropped down, and I was getting those higher readings on the megometer. Now, dust is another thing, too. So if you figure, how can dust get inside something like this? Well, you have your carbon rollers on the inside of the transformer, and these things are always rolling around, and they're always wearing away. Especially when a train derails, um, it's possible that uh, these guys can smoke. And uh, that smoke is inside the transformer, and when it dissipates, it can settle and lay onto the coils itself, and that could possibly lower some readings on, on the mega. So, it's always good if you want to clean the coils out every so often, um, you know, depending on use and stuff. Now, uh, will, would the megometer ruin the diodes or anything? I don't think so. I mean, you're not playing around with the direction or with the whistle throttle at all. So everything is just reading right through the coil. I even took out the mega uh, on, the, on the light bulb. I connected it to the dimple on the light bulb in the bottom and just touched the base a couple times and it did spark but it did not destroy the bulb it did show continuity on the light bulb so that light bulb still works now if you do decide to take the mega to a train show and you want to buy a transformer you know you're not going to open it up on site but if you're looking to do testing the base plate is going to be all metal but it is painted i've done tests where i put the um the mega on the plate and did my coil readings and I did get I, I did get the values that I just showed you but if you're looking for some bare metal the bottom side of this metal 
plate is bare metal because let's face it, you put the transformers down, you're moving it around, you're wearing away that paint. So if you take the magnetic clips, put it on the base of the transformer on that really thin lip, and then do all your appropriate readings, you should have no problem in finding any issues with the transformer like I did here with, with the bad ground th uh, thumb screw. So if you're doing a test, you could probably point out to the guy, hey, you know, this guy's broken here, can you cut me a break on the price? You know, instead of paying two, three hundred dollars, who knows what he might give up on you just so you can make a decent repair. So since we have all this down, let's start taking this apart.
Thank you.